Greetings fellow crypto enthusiasts and art fanatics. I'm your host Dell, and today I'll be diving into the second part of this short series of art tutorials where I cover how to set up and run your own arc nodes. If you haven't seen my previous video where I show you how to set up your own arc relay node on the devnet using a VPS, you can find that video in the description below. Meanwhile, in today's video, I will go over the basic security measures one should take when setting up and running an arc relay flash forging node on the arc network. If you're not familiar with the setup or the tech in general, I would advise you to check out my previous video. Additionally, I would strongly advise you to join us in our Slack when, where we spend a lot of time troubleshooting some of the issues that you may encounter. So definitely check us out by joining us in hashtag devnet and ask your problems away. So after following the steps and having your relay set up and ready to process blocks, you can begin securing the node by first changing the SSH port. Normally, you will use your port 22 to log into your account, so it's important to change this in order to avoid potential attackers from accessing your server. To do this, you must first type the following command in order to access the server's config file. You would type nano slash etc slash ssh slash ssh underscore config. Once completed, you'll be prompted with the following. In this scenario, be sure to input a number that is between 49,152 and 65,535. Now that you have disabled SSH port access, we can segue into disabling root access. In the same config as where we edited our SSH login information, you can scroll and search for a section called authentication. Under it, you will see a set of values that we will be working with. Follow along as I go about changing them. In essence, it's important to make sure that you change the permit root login to no, as this will make sure that the root login is disabled. Now we will dive into disabling X11 forwarding. And you can do that by simply scrolling down and searching for X11 forwarding and where it says yes, change that to no. And now you can avoid having potential attackers gaining access to your client and subsequently your server. The last bit in this config file will be to edit how many concurrent users can have access to the server. And we will edit this by scrolling down until we see hashtag max startups. Go ahead and uncomment the line like I am here and change the number shown here to two or if you're expecting to be the only person accessing your account, make it one. Now that you went over disabling SSH access, root access, excellent forwarding, and setting total concurrent user settings, you can press Control X, whichever operating system you're using, press Y and subsequently enter to save these settings. Restart your SSH daemon by typing the following, sudo service SSH restart, and afterwards exit. After exiting the server, you can confirm the changes by attempting to log in to your server using your root login info. If you cannot, like I am showing you here, then you have successfully edited your config. You will now have to log in using your new administrator credentials. And that wraps up this video. I am planning on making one more part of this security section as there are other strategies that exist to help you secure your node. In the next video, I'll discuss how to set up fail to ban using SSH keys and set up knock to make sure your security is as seamless as your login experience. A special thanks to the team for helping set up the tutorial and if you're interested for more information on this setup, you can find a link in the description below. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.